Good morning, brother and sister in the Dharma. Welcome to the Buddhist Mahavira Sunday Dharma talk. And for today's topic is benefit of sharing merits okay, by Chief Reverend. Thank you. You want to know about sharing of merits or transference of merit? Which one? Sharing. Oh. Sharing of merit we can do only with the living people, not with the dead people. Again, we cannot do this with other living beings, like animals, but devas can. Buddha's advice is, don't forget to remember devas when you perform some religious service and invite them to share the merits. Then they feel very happy. Then in return, they keep an eye on you. Divacha ratto cha haranti ye baling tasmahi nerakata appamatta. Can you tell me where it is? You recite this hmm? Ratana Sutta. <laughs> In Ratana Sutta, the sayings of the Buddha. Those devotees who perform religious services at day and night, Divacha Rattoja, when they invite you to share the merit, now he is addressing the devas. When they invite you to share the merit, tasmahini rakhata appamatta. Therefore it is your duty to look after them, attend to them, for them to avoid various misfortunes and accidents and robbery and a uh, lot of problems. From the Buddhist point of view, devas have, can do only that much. Not like other religions. Because one day, when I went to give a talk at the University of Islam, somebody asked this question, why Buddhists do not believe in God? Then I, who told you? You are wrong. It is not that Buddhists do not believe in God. Buddhist concept on God is different. Not like Christians or Muslims or Hindus. We have our own concept. And we know what the God can do and cannot do. Are these the difference? But all the others believe that God can do everything. They depend on God for everything. I remember when George Bush announced that we are going to declare war against you. Saddam Hussein said, we are not worried. We have God. Uh, then declare war, attack. Now where is the God? Where is Saddam Hussein? Uh, that is the strong belief that they have. They apply for everything. God, nothing but God. But Buddhists are not like that. Buddha's advice is you have to use your effort and knowledge and understanding but you have to cooperate with the devas. A few months ago we had a seminar, interreligious, Christian, Hindus, Muslim, Buddhists. The topic was prayer. They spoke on Prayer, why we should pray, what do we gain? Then I was the last 
a speaker. I told, I think God like me more. Because I never pray. I never ask anything from God. I never disturb Him asking. But you people every day in the name of praying, asking this, asking this, asking this from the God. <laughs> Therefore I think He like me more. <laughs> so that is their way of uh, belief in God. Then... <clears throat> If there are no such living beings in this world, the Buddha never say like this. They do exist. They are earth-bound devas. Heavenly and earth-bound, two groups. So we can contact earth-bound devas close to us and keep an eye on and vicinity of certain areas influenced by the devas, protected by the devas. We had an old Bodhi tree, half dead and the half not dead. But these people, when I was not here, cut down the tree and removed everything. The man who cut down the tree, when he was going back, had an accident and his leg was broken, same day. Uh, the, therefore, the trees, according to scientific discoveries also, have feeling and influence our life. We can influence the trees. Life is there. Plant life. Plant life, but no thinking mind. But sensation is there. You know, certain plant, when you touch close, certain leaves are sensation. So, <clears throat> devas are close to this earth and vicinity of many of them are famous or well-known trees, Bodhi tree, Banyan trees. Uh, they are very scared, even government, when they want to make a road, to cut down a Bodhi tree, they consider and discuss and go here and there whether it is advisable for us to cut down this tree. Reluctantly, they do that. Because this, for thousands of years, even before Buddhism come into existence, people had this belief that Bodhi tree as a holy tree. Since the Buddha gained his enlightenment when he was meditating under this tree, the name is given as Bodhi tree. Formerly it is not Bodhi tree, people tree. But people worship, they believe that there are certain devas as vicinity. Uh, that is why very often when people are in trouble, they go and do some Bodhi Puja. Bodhi Puja here, not only Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, but Devas also connected. Bodhi Puja. So you go and express your grievances, problems and troubles. Then some of them get the chance to get rid of them. Lady Sujata, the Buddha, after spending six years torturing his body, thinking that he gained enlightenment, realized that this should not be the method. 
he changed his mind, he decided to eat something. So he was sitting under a banyan tree. A lady who had no children for many years after her marriage, some people advised her, why don't you go to that tree and make a vow to offer something if you can get a baby. After one year, she got a baby. Now she wanted to fulfill her vow to offer. Indian custom and Sri Lankan, they prepare milk rice as a special offering. While she is preparing the milk rice, they wash the rice also with milk, without adding water. They cook and ask the servant to go and clean around the tree. When he went there, he saw somebody sitting under the tree. And she come back and reported, I think the deva smelling that you are preparing milk rice, come down from the tree and sitting, waiting. Oh, she was so happy and prepared the milk and carriages, somebody sitting and of milk rice. First time after six years, the Buddha had uh, some valuable solid food. After eating this, he got up. Then Neeranjara river was very close. He crossed the river. And then the Bodhi tree was close to that river. And sat down under that tree and started to meditate. Ah, here, another lady. Her father was uh, ambassador to Australia. I visited him, and his daughter is staying in Seremban. No children after her marriage. Somebody advised her, why not you go to this Bodhi tree and go seven round, round and round. At that time the walls are not there, can go round and round. Even without telling us, he has done this seven times, seven days. After that she got a baby. Then she came to see us carrying the baby. I have done this, ah, here I got the baby. Ah, these are living examples, what I have, we have seen. So, <clears throat> sharing of merit with the devas is very important for us to gain some sort of confidence, get rid of fear and worries, suspicion, insecurity feeling, because you think we have already invited the devas to share the merit, so in return they will look after, attend to us. Ah, this is the only thing that they can do. They cannot send us to heaven or hell, and they cannot wash away our sins as other religious people believe. So Buddhists believe that God, Devas, can support us only this much. They cannot give us wisdom to avoid our misfortune and troubles and robbery and accident. They can protect us. Now my own experience, before they built these two buildings, there was a very big ground with coconut trees. 
and Lala is growing. I was talking to the gardener who cut the lalang sitting under the coconut tree for nearly half an hour. Then suddenly the idea appeared in my mind one should not stand under a coconut tree for a long time. So just I move this place. Believe me, on the same spot where I was standing, about this much, Kalpa drop. How I get this idea? Another occasion, in Sri Lanka. I came to Colombo by bus, nearly 100 miles from our village, wanted to go back. I got the ticket, then I had to wait half an hour to start. Then I remember a small child who always come to me when I come out from our station, knowing that I bring some sweet. So I forgot to buy, got enough time. I crossed the road, went to, uh, up to buy some sweet. Then I met the teacher who taught me when I was studying in primary school. He has never seen me as a monk. He was so happy we were talking. And then across the road, I come back, that bus is gone. Now I had to wait another half an hour. So when I was traveling by this second bus, the bus that I supposed to travel had a nasty accident on the way. The front portion smashed. Do you know in Sri Lanka, <clears throat> I don't know whether you have seen, the front seat written there only for the monks. <laughs> Others never go and sit down there. If I were there on that day, completely smashed, how I escaped. Again, when I was young, I memorized all the sutras, reciting, 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 come and recite in front of the teacher. So I was reciting. Then idea appeared, I think, I should not sit down for a long time here and just got up. A cobra was running after a rat on the roof with the old building, dropped on the spot say, where I was sitting down, the cobra. How I escaped. Uh, these are the living example for us to understand my own experience. Therefore, I strongly believe that there are some gods, some devas keep an eye on us for us to escape from certain misfortune. Uh, that is why Buddha has advised us to share the merit with the devas you experience good results within this lifetime immediately because they have divine power to read our mind. No need to talk. When the thought appear in the mind, mental vibration they catch in any language, the Chinese or English. Oh, although they have not learned Chinese, <laughs> you know, create the idea. The idea is not Chinese idea. <laughs> they catch. Uh, that is how we get their, what you call, protection by knowing the, what will happen to us. They protect. So, again, sharing of merit with other human beings. 
one who receive share the merit must appreciate understand encourage for them to go ahead go with these religious activities uh, then they can share the merit now you go and tell others today i attended a religious talk i learned many valuable things to lead a religious life then that person or people say sadhu very good sadhu means very well done ah they share the merit those who encourage our religious activities they also share the merit although they have not done anything not given anything that is called sharing of merit and there is another important point that we have to learn <coughs> my throat is very bad today yesterday whole day we had the seminar i had to speak from morning up to lunch <laughs> so many questions so manas sahagat jnana sampayut asankarik three qualities must be in our mind when we are doing some religious service what are those three so manas sahagat there must be some sort of happiness confidence devotion in their mind without such happiness devotion confidence when you perform a meritorious deed you won't get the full effect mind must be pure then jnana sampayut you must know what you are doing why you want to do this why you should not do this not because some others advise you not because it is our tradition or our way of life no you must know the significance why we should offer flower to the buddha why <coughs> we should come and bow down pay respect to the buddha we must know the meaning not as tradition when i went to university of islam i told them you condemned us as idol worshippers to you it is a very bad attitude worshiping the idol not knowing what we are doing we don't worship the idols we don't pray to idols we take the idols or the image as a symbol to recall to remember the buddha into our mind otherwise we are not praying to these images asking anything you have wrong idea about this ah uh, then we must know i can tell you a very nice story few hundred years after the buddha there was a well known monk when he give religious talk thousands of people assembled mara was watching this he was very unhappy he doesn't like people to be religious what he did he organized some sort of entertainment with dancing music and singing and merry making entertainment just opposite the same temple now every day slowly 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 
all those devotees who used to attend the Dhamma talk go there and enjoy. Finally, nobody to come and listen to his Dhamma. Then, this monk came to know this is the act of Mara. Although he disturbed the Buddha, the Buddha did not teach him a good lesson. I must do that. So he also went there. After their performance, he got up and said, We really appreciate your entertainment in respect of a performance. I want to put a garland on your neck. Oh, he was very proud. So this monk went and put a garland on his neck. Later, he found this garland is tightening like python. He tried and tried to pull it out. Listen. Then he went to Sakra. You know Sakra, king of the Deva. Asked to help him. He also tried and tried, cannot take it out. Then he advised to go to Mahabrahma. Mahabrahma is the creator god at that time. He went to Mahabrahma. He also tried, cannot. Then he told him, you must go back to the same person who put this. He is the one who can take it out. He come back and requested, please take out this son, otherwise I am going to die. Ah, then the monk said, all right. Under two conditions, I will do that. First thing, you must promise in future, you are not going to disturb our religious activities. Mara said, yes. Second thing, you have seen the Buddha. You disturb him. I have never seen the Buddha. I know you have power to appear as the Buddha. Because I like to see the real Buddha figure. Then Mara said, yes, I can do that. Then he said, one condition, when I appeared as the Buddha, you should not worship me because I am not a holy man. Then the monk said, no, I am not going to worship you. Then he appeared as the real Buddha. The monks paid respect. Then he said, you said you are not going to worship me. Then the monk said, I am not worshipping you, I am worshipping the Buddha. Ah, this is a very good lesson. When people condemn, you are worshipping idol. We do not worship the idol, we worship the Buddha. This is a symbol for us to recall the Buddha into our mind. Three important point, understanding what we are doing. Without understanding, proper understanding, or somebody asks us to do, if not our tradition, if not uh, we may get blamed from others, you do that. You won't get the real effect. You must have the real meaning, understanding, ah, worshipping, why we should worship this idol. We worship the Buddha, not this idol. This is a symbol for us to recall the Buddha into our mind. Ah, that understanding there. Then you get more devotion, more understanding. You can understand you are doing a very good thing by respecting such holy man. Significance. Third one, Asankharika. Mahdi, the important point. 
the idea of doing this meritorious deed first created in your mind. After that, you tell others. Now you want to give a dan. So you created the idea. After that, you go and tell others. I am going to give a dana. Do you like to join with us? Oh, yes, yes. They also contribute something. But who get more merit? One who created that idea to do that, get more. Others followed him. They did not create the idea in their mind. Uh, that is called the most important aspect, three things. Therefore, you also must think and to do some meritorious deeds. Don't wait others to come and remind you, tell you, ask you to do all these religious activities. Now you go home. You tell your parents or brothers or sisters, today I attended a religious service. And if they say, oh, sadhu, very good, very well done, nah, then they also share the merit. But some others say, oh, you have no other work. Go and waste your time there. Ah, they never get share. That is called sharing of merit with others. Others must appreciate, then they can share. Now we cannot share the merit with animals. Because they can understand. Anim animal, spirit, a ghost or devils, you cannot share the merit with them. Then, sharing of merit with living people, whether we can see them or not, we can share. Transference of merit is different. Transference of merit we can do only for our departed ones who have departed from this world. That is no sharing of merit. How to do that? <coughs> Especially this period now, nearly one month, you perform so many <clears throat> activities, ceremonies, entertainment to entertain your hungry ghost. This belief is only among the Chinese. The Buddhists in many other parts of the world have no such idea. There are hungry ghosts who come out after one year and we can uh, transfer the merit for them to get it up from their suffering and after that they go back. But they are very obedient. Hungry ghosts are very obedient. There's a proper time for them to come they no proper period to stay here. After that they go back and settle down. But other ghosts come and disturb us every day. But not hungry ghosts. Actually this has nothing to do with the teachings of the Buddha. Chinese have created this idea long ago. You follow this as your tradition. If you do not perform something you feel that you have not done your duty, uh, that can create some sort of fear, suspicion in your mind. Therefore it is, whether it is meaningful or not, as a tradition to maintain some sort of confidence in your mind, you contribute something, nothing wrong. But that is not the way 
how the Buddha has advised us. There are 31 planes of existence after our death. So rebirth can take place in one of those places according to our good and bad karma. Karma is responsible for that. There is no God or anybody to carry our life there. Our own karmic energy. Then hell and spirit or ghost then animals human devas earthbound devas heavenly devas six group then brahmas higher than the devas again certain brahma body exists without mind mind means active mind mental energy is there just like under anesthetic injection mind is there but that mind cannot do anything in other Brahma world mind mental energy exists there is no visible physical body many people like it why Life exists, there is no burden of the physical body. But Buddha did not encourage that. Uh, these are the 31 planes of existence. When we come to this ghost or spirit, they are divided into four groups, not only hungry ghosts. Hungry ghost is one group. Nijjama tannika, kuppi pasika, pansu pisaja, paradattu upajivi. Four groups of ghost. Kuppi pasika, ah, hungry ghost. That means no one can satisfy they are hunger, they are thirst by feeding, feeding, or doing anything. That is their way of life. As long as they remain there, even then we try to do something whether they receive or not, we can satisfy. Second group is Pansu Pisaja. Those spirit and those ghosts who are living around the dirty places, dirty, smelly, ugly places, their life can carry on with such environment. We cannot transfer the merit to them. They cannot receive. Hungry ghosts also cannot receive the merit. Kuppipasika and suffering from thirst. Always thirsty and thirsty and thirsty. No one can quench their thirst by giving, providing drink. You cannot transfer the merit to them. Because of the bad karma that they have done during their previous birth, rebirth has taken place in such forms. Uh, then the other group, Paradatupajivi, depend on others. They are not like hungry ghosts or any other unfortunate ghost. They remain as spirit or ghost without suffering too much, without enjoying their life. The reason is 
when they were here in this world they have not accumulated good karma or bad karma if you have done good karma they will be born in devaloka manushya loka human oh, not that way if they have done bad karma they will be born in hell or animals that's way but these people they work they earn they eat they enjoy their life they have not done any harm to anybody they have not done support to anybody so selfish they enjoy themselves without supporting helping others at the same time without disturbing others ah uh, they are the ones who will be born in that particular a spirit or ghost world because they haven't got enough karmic energy to continue their journey and then departed person relatives in honor or to remember or out of gratitude do some meritorious deed like offering a dana or supporting helping others or doing some thing for religious activities the merit that they gain they can transfer to those departed a spirit or ghost they can receive because the mental communication after our death physically or oh, all the element separated but the love attachment affection understanding that we have never disappear from the mind therefore they have connection relationship with the living that is why we can transfer the merit if there is no connection we cannot transfer the merit we cannot transfer the merit to unknown people because we have no mental communication do you know there are so many incident those departed one who were born in that particular place they appear in dream many people experience this some people get very good information from them what is that supposing you are suffering from some sort of sickness you cannot find a suitable medicine for this in dreams you get the name of the medicine from that person there are certain people who had this and they give warning for your protection to avoid your house may burn or flood destroy your house or robbery they give some advice because of the relationship mental communication but they are very unfortunate not enough good karma to enjoy their life Now what we do by doing some <laughs> religious service we remember them then we transmit radiate 
our mental energy because there is connection, relationship. So they attune their mental energy to receive. So we transmit from here, they receive. They feel very happy. Then it, they get the chance to get rid of that unfortunate state and continue the journey. Certain other karmas come and support them or disturb them. All of us have so many karmas follow us just like our shadow. Wherever we go, shadows also follow us. All our good and bad karma not yet affected, but follow us. The Buddha, Arahantas also had to face because they follow up to that extent until that person attained nirvana. Below that level, as long as physical body remain effect, either good effect or the bad effect. So we do not know what sort of karmas are behind us, what we have done during our previous birth and earlier part of our life here. They have never disappeared. So when the death takes place, all these karmas follow. The nearest karma that appeared before the death existence again take place or rebirth take place according to that particular karma. Other karmas are behind. That is the secret. So these people who died have never done enough good karma to to influence the mind at the dying moment. Or then rebirth has taken place in unfortunate state. Life is very miserable there. Are then living departed, living one, we have a lot of reason, our duty, our gratitude, remember what they have done for us, and out of compassion, we transfer the marriage for them to receive, get rid of that unfortunate state. After that, they get the chance to continue their journey. When you try to start your motor car, engine doesn't work. What you do? You push this one, then engine start automatically. The transference of merit is exactly like that. If not, when you are driving halfway, your motor car stop. Why? There's no oil. So you had to wait until you get oil into the engine. Then start again and continue. So the transference of merit is exactly like that. Uh, then they feel very happy. If they are happy, they remember you, you get their blessing. When they had the chance to get rid of this unfortunate state, uh, that is the advice given by the Buddha. Don't forget your departed one when you perform some religious work. And devas, these two. 
This is very important. No, this is not a mythology or imagination. This is very practical. Our experience we have. This advice given only by the Buddha. Others have become slaves to God. Everything they expect from God. Now you have learned the difference between sharing of merit, transference of merit, and how to do that, how to gain that. Uh, it is very clear. This understanding is very important. So you can do some services without following certain tradition such as like slaughtering animals to offer in the name of the departed one. It is not, Buddhism never agree with that. Wasting so much money to make so many things here in the name of the departed one. That departed one never gain anything. You spend 50,000 ringgit here to build so many homes and keep ashes and perform some rites and rituals. You spend 50,000 ringgit. The departed person never get anything. It is for you to gain some sort of satisfaction to think that I have done something. So the advice given by the Buddha, only way that you can help, support others by performing some meritorious deed, not by performing right and rituals and burning all sort of things, but by doing some meritorious deed, the merit that you gain, you can transfer. They will be very happy and you are also benefited. Okay, now we would like to open the session for Q&A. Reverend, what happens if the departed one has been reborn as an animal or an insect? Will they also be able to benefit from this meritorious deeds? Sorry. We cannot transfer the marriage to animal because they have no mental energy to receive. That is why we say they are unfortunate living beings. And certain ghosts also explain just now cannot receive the merit. Only that particular group. But we can radiate metta to animals or other living beings are effective. We can release their sufferings also by radiating our metta toward them, not by transference of merit or sharing of merit. Good morning, Reverend. I have one question. Um, in the plane of existence, there is a plane that is called Asuras. Uh, well, would, um, actually, I don't know what Asuras is. Thank you. In every religion, there is a very strong opponent and who create a lot of disturbances. Now, Christians and Muslims have Satan. They say Satan disturb, interrupt, pollute, and we become very bad, very wicked, very cruel because of Satan, influenced by Satan. Buddhism says, as I mentioned just now, Mara. Mara is one of the devas, living in one of the deva loka one particular realm of the Devaloka. He is not happy 
to see people becoming religious. He wants people to be bad and wicked and harmful. He always interrupt. Uh, that is called Mara. Hinduism introduced Asura. Asura is also in between earthbound devas and a spirit or ghost. So they are not very good or understanding people. They always disturb others. That is Hindu concept. In Buddhism also, they use this name just because Buddhism was originated in India, they follow the Indian tradition. Uh, they are called Asura. Yep. So, uh, sorry to my ignorance. Can we transfer the merits to those who are not belong to Buddhists? They are in other religion. Can we transfer merits? No, religious label is not important. They are labels. Assume your father or your mother a Christian. Yes. Or you can transfer the merit to them without any difficulty. That religious label is not there after their death. <laughs> Thank you. Chief, uh, just now you mentioned there's four types of uh, spirit and ghost, but uh, you only have spoken about three. Uh, the hungry ghost, the ghosts that live in dirty, ugly places. Uh, what is that? and Paradattu Bajivi. Hungry ghost, first group. Yeah. Second ghost is Kupipasika. No, thirst, no, always thirst, not the food. Okay, all right. Always thirsty. Venerable Mughalana, when he was going for arms round, he saw one of them. He spent a whole day by pouring water and water. Still he could not quench his thirsty. Okay, all uh, right. That is there. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, let's go to the last uh, agenda, which is transference of merits. Right. Sharing of merit or transference of merit or aspiration, radiating loving kindness. Three items are here. When you read the English translation, you can see there are four things here you have to recite. Sharing of merit, transference of merit, our aspiration and radiations of our metta for the well-being of others. Four items are there. Okay, start. Imina punya kamena Upajaya Gunutara Achari Upasaraja Mata <coughs> Piyamama Suryo Chandimaraja Gunavanta Narapicha Brahma Maraja Inda Loka Pala Ta Devata Yamo Mita Manusaja Majata Virika Pitcha Sabve Sata Sukhiyanto Punyani Pakatani Sukhancha Tividande Kipam papeta omata Imira punyaka mena Imira uddisenate Kipam sulabe yuva Tanu padanate 
my mother, my father, my teacher, my friend may share this merit. Start like this. After sharing the merit, uh, then we transfer the merit to all the other departed ones. Then, radiations of our mitta toward every living being. Even the plant life also, you can radiate our mitta to grow very healthy and produce flowers and fruits. Scientists also tested this. It works. Mental energy we can influence for the plant life. Then our own aspiration. We are doing all these religious activities for us to be born in certain places where we can continue our religious activities <coughs> until we attain Nibbana. Ah, see, four items are there. Bhavatu sabba mangalam rakkantu sabba devata sabba muddhanu bhavena sada sati bhavantu te bhavatu sabba mangalam Rakkantu sabba deyata sabba dhammanu bhavena sada sotya bhavantu te bhavatu sabba mangalam rakkantu sabba sabba dhammanu bhavena sada sotya bhavantu te So good health and peace of life to all of you. That's all for today's talk. Can you please rise?